I've directed and taught various programs, teaching hundreds of students and many one-on-one -on -one clients how to achieve personal goals that require them to become much more than they are now, using both my personal and science background. I've always had big goals, learning cool skills career-wise that often feel beyond my reach, and I knew that if I ever was going to stand a chance of achieving them, I needed to kill off parts of my old self while training others. One of the defining skills I noticed that causes a huge separation in how fast people, even young kids, learn over others is their ability to fix their focus on something without taking it off just because it gets uncomfortable. So we're going to understand how your brain focuses and how you can train it to be way better than you might be now. And we're going to break it down into three parts. So what does it mean to be focused? What is going on in your brain that makes it so that so many clients I've seen can't do it for more than five minutes without becoming distracted or frankly just giving up with a weird excuse. Being focused, especially if you're learning or doing anything active, essentially means that your brain suddenly goes from a passive daydreaming state where the brain's default mode network is switched on. The mind wanders and is something I think my grandfather has mastered being in 24-7 to switching to what we can call a highly activated state. This means that much of your brain switches from a low power mode to an incredibly activated attention demanding state and this consumes resources and the higher the demand or cognitive load on your brain is which can come from trying to solve a complex problem doing or learning something that is beyond your current skill level and requires you to learn many new things well professors I talked to said that this state by itself isn't necessarily uncomfortable or stressful it is incredibly fatiguing this is what what happens when your task positive network switches on. A state that can be unfamiliar to some people, which is where I would see them quickly want to stop, especially if they didn't immediately see an amazing result. The best one-on-one -on -one clients I see typically after an hour or more just mentally can't keep going. They've burned through so many other brain's resources to stay at it during our session that they now really just need to go home and rest. Which is also why I found I had to feel out and be careful careful with how much new information I could give them at once, so as to not overwhelm their focus with too many different things. If you want an easy way to think about this switch from passive to active, something I jokingly said to a student who was curious about why they could play games all day long, but found that they couldn't just keep training skills like a perfect robot, is if you imagine your brain as a campfire. When your brain is passive, all you have to do is add a bunch of small sticks and leaves from your resource pile to keep your slow fire going. But when having them learn or do something new and difficult, I was asking them to turn their brain into the largest bonfire any of us had ever seen, chucking as many logs onto it before they suddenly found they had no more logs left to give. But the interesting thing is that the more you do this process of bonfiring to your brain, the better or more efficient it gets at how fast it burns through your logs. As the brains of those who dare to push themselves need to use less and less of their logs to both create the same size of bonfire and the brain gets better at positioning each log to burn both hotter and longer. You can start to see how training yourself to become one of the best concentrators or focusers out there is a crushing advantage. Now when it comes to how long a person can stay concentrated on their task without stopping and likewise how good the task will be for stimulating your brain to get better at focusing, this depends on the type of task, its complexity, and even your own perception or pressures that you place on the thing can have a huge impact on your ability. When it comes to things that are repetitive, mundane, or just routine tasks that you have done many times before, these types of things require a lot less cognitive effort. Because your brain is an efficiency machine, while these types of things may be hard for someone who hasn't done them before, for, for you, your brain has created, destroyed, and strengthened neural pathways so when you go to do it again, you have to think about it less and less until it's boringly easy. Which is a reason why you shouldn't stop when things get uncomfortable. Because your brain will wire itself to make whatever you're doing easier for it in the future. And this includes the pathways responsible for focusing itself. This is why when it comes to more difficult and draining tasks, like solving a complex
complex problem, analyzing lots of information, learning or taking the time to build a complex skill like a backflip or new language, whether or not you see the chore as fun, eventually these will mentally deplete you. But the important thing is, when you start to feel depleted or as it happens with even great students, your mind really starts to wander, you actually choose to keep pushing for at least another 15 to 30 minutes. What's happening is, as your brain tires or runs out of logs to burn, it actually starts to flicker its attention in and out, in an attempt to slow down and save resources. But just like a muscle, your brain will increase its stamina if you push yourself to work beyond your comfort zone in both terms of length and in how demanding the activity is. This is what leads to a difference I saw between an 8 year old student who would go until he would mentally just drop after an hour of me throwing some pretty complex information at him and a 16 year old who would burn out after 15 minutes and needed things to be incredibly simple. The other thing that I found to be incredibly interesting is your perception. Depending on how much you think a decision matters, you actually assign a cognitive load to it. Typically, the more we think something matters, the more details we tend to look at, stress about, and this depletes your resources. Kind of like you not caring how wrinkled your shirt may be when you go to work out, but on your wedding day, suddenly you care a lot. This is the same reason why one of my college professors, after a group of us studied and got an A on the final exam, told us not to celebrate until all of the exams were over, nor become distraught if you got a lower grade than you wanted wanted because we had more exams coming up and both over celebrating and panicking wastes resources. Be chill like Batman. So what should you do to get to be one of the best focusers out there, or at least way better than you are now? For once, I'll give you a silver bullet. Pick something, one thing that is really mentally taxing, and train yourself to push through doing it every time. The best things you can do are things that require you to problem solve and make your brain work to learn new information at the same time. Examples are if you decided to learn gymnastics, parkour, and tricks like the 8 year old I taught, learning a new language sits around the top of things you can do to both stress and stimulate your brain. You could even download an ancient and extremely complex game called Go that's like chess and play it in your free time. It's insane. Really, there's probably tons of actual fun puzzle solving games out there to both entertain and infuriate you. The point is, the more stimulating the task is, you force yourself to stay on it without giving up giving your brain the practice it needs to get better at how efficiently it uses its logs or resources in the future, to where you'll find that problems that once wiped you out are actually pretty easy to just do, and then you can just keep going instead of being wiped out like everyone else, who want to just go down to the bar, eat chicken wings, and take shots to forget how hard that one thing they had to do today was. Now, here's my quick twist on the snake in the garden that can even kill the highest level performers that anyone can do to immediately improve how well they can concentrate right now. This is something that plagued me for years when I would sit down for long editing sessions or to create class plans. Say that you went to work and you could hear your roommate or someone playing a really loud game or movie, you also left a window on your computer open to something fun you like to watch, you have clothes on the floor, trash on your desk, and someone occasionally knocks on your door, who, if you're me at one point, may even disapprove of what you're doing, each of these things adds a little bit to your cognitive load. Your brain is constantly aware of the mess, the open window, the knock, and your working memory for being able to hold different things in your head at once to focus on is reduced, because a bunch of other things are taking up your space, and now your brain has to spend resources to to filter these things out of your attention. Working in a clean, isolated, distraction-free environment is perhaps the biggest thing many of us can do right now to see the biggest return. Pick something in your life and go flat out at it. You can do this. This stuff may sound simple,
simple, but it has an amazing impact on students I've seen. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved one fact for last. Having sessions of really intense focus can lead to improved somatic plasticity, meaning that your brain will begin to wire new connections or basically learn new skills and information faster than it could before in the same amount of time, allowing you to snowball how fast you can learn any new skill. A point which we go over in this video on how you can increase your intelligence. See you in the next one.